good so today we'll continue our discussion on unit 4 uh, by now we have almost solidified all the concepts related to solar so you understand what a solar cell is uh, if you talk about voltage and current how they vary a uh, cell when they are multiple cells are put together they form a stack and for a stack probably how this vi is now when we move from cell to stack uh, there can be some challenges which was outlined to you challenges in the form of uh, the sunlight being present at one part of it and it is not present in another part of it when such a thing happens what do we do so that was a question that came up so for which i think you all have uh, made an answer so multiple stacks there are connections which go across so under all this uh, which way do we handle them so we you came up with mppt uh, role of what mppt is why mppt is required so you've seen all those prob today we will wind up all this discussion with an efficiency tab so what is the acceptable way to look at solar efficiency so because uh, what we did was we made a choice we will look at solar only in the eyes of a pv that is photovoltaics technically to, uh, solar energy can also be looked at as a form of thermal energy we are not doing that because in a scale uh, where we are looking at a solar car the thermal concept doesn't make sense whereas the pv concept makes better sense for us okay so that's the reason why most of our discussion has been with respect to photovoltaics pv means photovoltaics that's what we have been doing and by now you would have seen uh, what it is so what what it is capable of okay so in when today's discussion gets over uh, i want you all to think about why solar is even considered as an option where does it fit okay so that is something which i want you to consider by the end of discussion today right so this session will be short considering that you have another uh, uh, appointment today so we'll uh, move according to that so all the best for your review mehboob you can take over yeah thank you Uh, good morning guys uh, can you able to uh, see the screen yes sir yeah thank you yeah uh, okay uh, in today's class we will
see uh, like a short discussion on the cell efficiency <clears throat> okay uh, if you generally uh, take the uh, input and outputs of a solar panel for example so just consider it as a solar panel and these are the output terminals so I have current and then voltage V and we know that uh, to generate the uh, power from this solar so we need to have an irradiation so that is our input so that is P in so from all sort of directions we will be taking and whatever the power it produces that we are considering as output that is P naught and we know that the general uh, normally the efficiency uh, formula is so n is equals to the output to the input so here in our case that is p naught divided by p in now uh, this p naught uh, refers to the the maximum power output that is that an a solar panel can give so we know that how to get this maximum power output that is from our uh, pv graph that is uh, i v and then we have this side p and the graph varies in such way And we know this is our uh, maximum power out, that is P max. And this is our where we get the I max and V max. So the P naught can be written as uh, P max divided by P in. Right, and then this P max we have arrived from this I max and V max, so V into I, so V into I divided by P in, and from our uh, IV graph or even these two uh, terms, we can even get from the data sheet of a photovoltaic panel right and now this p in is depend upon our the surrounding solar like conditions so even if it varies like area to area and region to region so we have to make it an as a standard value so we will taking the standard we may call it as uh, irradiance. So that is one kilowatt per meter square, right? So this irradiance is so whatever the wavelengths uh, occurs. So just we are taking the uh, accumulation of all those values together, right? And now this is uh, regarding your irradiance. Now to get this P in input, that is the irradiance that is which we are getting multiplied to the area of the panel. Area of panel, right? So this irradiance uh, we have one. watt per meter square uh, into the area of panel so this uh, for example will will also take up a, a small numerical problem to solve this so this area panel uh, if you just 
as I mentioned, some data sheet which is provided in the manual regarding that particular panel. So it will also be mentioned that is area of panel. So in form of uh, cells, like six into 10 pieces, they will be mentioned. And each cell dimension that is, they will be giving one uh, like length into breadth in terms of mm or in meters. So just I have taken as example in some other uh, reference book that is, they have taken the area that is 156 mm into 156 mm. That is, it's a uh, square uh, cell. So usually we'll be seeing the rectangle. So, but they have used here the square cell. Now, so one kilowatt per meter square into this area, whatever the cell area uh, we are getting here, that is, so the number of cells are six into 10, that is 60 pieces we have. So 60 into 0.156 cross 0.156 meter square, right? So if you just multiply this, everything you'll be getting 1.46 meter square, the area, effective area. Now, if you just multiply these two, that is one kilowatt, uh, one kilowatt per meter square into 1.46 meter square. So meter, meter gets cancelled. That is, we'll be getting nearly 1.46 four six kilowatts so this is our input we are uh, giving to the or uh, it is getting from the solar right now we want uh, what is the output of the solar panel so generally in data sheet they will be also mentioning the efficiency of the uh, solar cell. So, in this particular reference, they have taken the cell efficiency is uh, nearly 16.5 percentage. Now, uh, n cell is equals to p out max or p output divided by p in. The cell efficiency is 16.5 divided by 100 is equals to P naught divided by P in is six one point four six kilowatts. So, uh, for doing the calculation, the maximum uh, the power output of this panel will be nearly two forty watts. Okay. For the uh, input of one point four six kilowatts. We are getting the output of 240 watts alone, right? So see the efficiency is of very less, even when you compare with the the IC engine. So where we'll be having probably like 42 percentage of efficiency. So this is with respect to the cell. With respect to the cell, actually, right? Now, uh, we are, if you look at the module, uh, sorry, we have taken the all the things, right? If you look at the module, efficiency of the module, so it will be actually the efficiency will be less than your solar cell or fan. So, why? Because in this solar cell so if you just take the uh, any shape that is either rectangle or it can be of a square so we will be utilizing the, the entire area either here or here here the actual the effective area is effective area is higher in case of module 
So if I just take the solar panel, so I'll be having the, uh, this kind of the arrangements of arrays, right? So where we are having the gaps here and even at the edges. So here the effective area is less irradiance, as in the case of the cell, right? So that's why the module efficiency will be uh, much lesser than the cell. So it will be like probably uh, the efficiency of module around 14 to 15 percentage, right? While taking like consideration into this uh, solar panel, if you want to apply, like if you want to incorporate an application to any solar vehicle, then you need to take the consideration of solar like efficiency of the module. Why? Because uh, generally we'll be uh, placing the panels, right? So in that case, the practical efficiency of any solar panel of the uh, is 14 to 15 percentage only. So this will be your consideration rather than your 16 like solar efficiency of the cell. So and generally if you can take this uh, efficiency if you want to uh, go uh, how this efficiency varies I max so as we have done earlier into uh, Vmax max and divided by I into area of the cell. Same thing here for module I max into Vmax by I into area of the module. Since the we can take it as a effective area so effective area will be less and here the effective area will be higher right so that's why your efficiencies or uh, values lower for module and the efficiency for the cell is higher and this efficiency actually will vary to the material to material we will see a few materials that are considered in this up kind of applications and how the efficiency are uh, vary for this uh, applications uh, for example if you look at the poly crystalline materials so the efficiency will be of 15 to 18 percentage and then the monocrystalline, so it will be of 16.5 to 19 percentage. And then polycrystalline, uh, 17 to 19.5. Uh, so in this also there are uh, types that is uh, polycrystalline that is PERC so I'll tell you what is uh, the abbreviation for this and this poly and then monocrystalline PERC so it will be of 7.5 to 20 percentage again monocrystalline n type so it efficiency ranges from 19 to 20.5 same the same monocrystalline of uh, n type and so there is another variation that is hjt it is from 19 to 21.7 percentage 
and then same monocrystalline of n type ibc so there are these are the variations 20 to 22.6 percentage of efficiency so these are the different uh, materials that can be uh, used for the solar cells and these are the uh, efficiencies for respective materials if you look into this uh, efficiency values the maximum which we can get is 22.6 efficiency is 22.6 percentage alone right so actually the efficiency is very much uh, less when you compare with the uh, your ic engines or your electric motors right the electric vehicles so even the reason why we are considering this solar is power so only because of the renewable energy right and then again we need to uh, take some sort of like steps the average uh, solar radiation for the year like month to year so actually the season varies and the uh, temperature change conditions will also be changes right and based on this uh, input so you can do an analysis that uh, whether the solar car or vehicles can actually come into market right so this so based on the uh, whatever the characteristics we have seen from the beginning and for the today's class so you can do your own uh, analysis whether these are suitable or not right and we will keep this uh, for a moment side we will see the the cost analysis so there is also uh, in the Bus, there is cost comparison they have given. So just I will give an overview on this cost comparison between your conventional vehicles and then electric and then solar. So electric, even the solar are Yeah, uh, sorry for the disturbance. So there is a uh, power cut.
so we'll see uh, the cost comparison between the uh, petrol versus the electric and solar panel solar cars okay okay so generally uh, so before going into that so we will be taking a vehicle so how many kilometers it actually uh, runs in a month so roughly if you uh, take in any uh, city driving conditions city driving conditions so maximum uh, or average we will take that is average kilometers that is thousand kilometers per month right and if you take an year comparison so 12 into thousand that is 12,000 kilometers per year. Okay. Now, if you take the fuel prices, right? And then uh, if you take the average uh, mileage of a vehicle, okay, I will take the maximum or the average that is 15 kilometers per liter okay now uh, if i travel 12000 kilometers per year so it will be after taking the mileage uh, that is 12000 divided by 15 that is 800 liters per year this is the fuel consumption right now fuel cost fuel cost so that is uh, if i so 800 into if i take today's diesel value so today's fuel cost so this average i'll take 100 that is uh, yearly it will be 80,000 rupees per year we are spending on the fuel, right? Now, same thing you take for the an electric vehicle. So, we have an electrical vehicle of uh, in today's condition that is uh, Tata Nexon. So, I will take the Tata Nexon as an example so because now this vehicle is in market and the major number of uh, sales has been done by this Tata company with Nexon. Now this Tata Nexon's, the battery uh, capacity is, so average I'll take the 30 kilowatt hour. Okay. It means that uh, if I, and this is the battery capacity. Now, all the time, when if it drains, I need to charge the battery. So I have to provide 30 units, 30 units to charge the battery, whole battery, charge the battery. And again, uh, we are not talking the time consuming. So we are only the taking the uh, number of units to charge the battery right so now 30 units we want now the average unit price average unit price so this will be uh, varying according to a uh, state to state and also the uh, subsidiaries given by the government for this uh, electrical vehicles right so there will be of a variation like four to eight rupees per unit now I will be taking the average like between these two uh, 
the maximum value we can take that is i will take 7 rupees per unit if it costs okay now we will see the uh, as we as we told that the number of uh, the vehicle runs kilometers per hour so vehicle the running is 1000 kilometers per month and if this uh, tata nexons range if you take average uh, it will be they have mentioned like some 300 to 330 kilometers and this will be like uh, depends upon your speed of your vehicle your how you are operating the vehicle okay so it has some uh, speed constraints i will be taking the minimum range now in one charge i can go up to 300 kilometers right since we are taking the uh, month calculation so the thousand kilometers i want to travel okay uh, for that how many times i need to charge okay uh, thousand divided by 300 so i need to charge at least three and a half, half times so i need to charge three and a half times in month okay it means uh, <laughs> three times uh, three into 30 units uh, 30 plus 15 uh, total of so 30 90 actually sorry uh, so for one it it consumes 30 units uh, two times 60 and then three times 90 units so per month it is uh, 90 plus half that is uh, you take around 45 right so around 35 units per month now 135 into 7 uh, that is uh, price value that is 135 into 7 you will be getting around 945 rupees per month if you take per year year calculation that is 12 into 945 rupees into 12 you will be having around 11,340 per year. See the electrical vehicle, which the value we got for uh, 11,000 of petrol car, which we got is 80,000 per year. So there is a huge difference between the, the price, right? And if you just see the solar panel, car, now how get calculation for this solar car, right? Now know that the requirement for the car is 30 kilowatt hour. Now to do that, uh, actually you need to know, I will give just an overview how to calculate. So one panel can produce how many kilowatts? Okay. And then number of panels you require. Number of panels required for a car. So that equal to uh, N into kilowatts. 
so that will be giving your overall power output that is p output and whether this p output is uh, it will be remains throughout the month same or not so that's a different case and then after taking this overall value and if it is matching to your capacity then you can take the calculation log uh, cost per panel okay so one panel cost how much so likewise n number of panels so this is like installation cost uh, we are not talking that uh, since the p in uh, we do we are not using any power right any uh, like we are not giving any electricity to charge the vehicle so the charges getting from solar power right so there is no total cost per solar cars so there is like zero cost we are doing this but only thing is the how many number of panels we need to incorporate for such capacity so that's the only task we have so maybe the capacity will be uh, comes down or else uh, the irradiation effect will not be same throughout the uh, year. so it will be changing right and then also we need to take up the uh, life cycle of of panels so how long it will be uh, for functioning same thing for electric vehicles the battery and motor how many years okay so these things we need to take into uh, consideration while doing the uh, you know, right so this is a, a rough uh, calculation or comparison between the petrol electric and like electric instance it's a battery and then solar power cars and then same thing you can do for your uh, fuel cells too so what is the uh, cost that you incorporate as an input right and after looking the efficiency of the solar panel so you do the analysis on your own then you come to a conclusion that whether the solar panels or solar cars can be actually implemented or not so that's for the uh, today's class uh, if you have any doubt you can ask so if not can leave thank you thank you sir yeah thank you